If you're watching this video, you might be familiar with narcolepsy, and maybe you even think you have it yourself, so let's talk about it. Narcolepsy is a chronic neurological disorder that affects your brain's ability to control sleep-wake cycles. People with narcolepsy may feel rested after waking, but then feel very sleepy throughout the day. Individuals with narcolepsy also experience uneven and interrupted sleep that can involve waking up frequently during the night. Sound like you? If so, you probably already know that narcolepsy can greatly affect daily activities. People may unwillingly fall asleep in the middle of driving, eating, or even talking. Other symptoms might include sudden muscle weakness while awake that makes a person go limp or unable to move, vivid dreamlike images and hallucinations, and total paralysis just before falling asleep or just after waking up. These symptoms can get pretty serious and definitely shouldn't be ignored. Narcolepsy affects both males and females equally. Symptoms typically start in childhood, adolescence, or young adulthood, but can occur at any time in life. Since people with narcolepsy are often misdiagnosed with other conditions, such as psychiatric disorders or emotional problems, it can take years for someone to get the proper diagnosis. It's estimated that hundreds of thousands of people in the United States alone are narcoleptic. So, how do you know if you have narcolepsy? There are two major types of the disorder, classified simply as type 1 and type 2. The main difference here is cataplexy, which is only associated with type 1 narcolepsy. Cataplexy is defined as the sudden loss of muscle tone while a person is conscious, leading to weakness and a loss of voluntary muscle control. It's often triggered by sudden strong emotions such as laughter, fear, anger, stress, or excitement. As you can probably imagine, this can be a scary experience. Some people may only have one or two attacks in a lifetime, while others may experience many attacks every day. In about 10% of narcolepsy cases, cataplexy is the first symptom to appear and is often misdiagnosed as a seizure disorder. Attacks may be mild and involve only a momentary sense of minor weakness in a limited number of muscles, such as a slight drooping of the eyelids. The most severe attacks result in a total body collapse, during which individuals are unable to move, speak, or keep their eyes open. In even the most severe episodes, people remain fully conscious, a characteristic that distinguishes cataplexy from fainting or seizure disorders. The loss of muscle tone during cataplexy resembles paralysis of muscle activity that naturally occurs during REM sleep. For people who have experienced the severity of cataplexy, this can be horrifying. On a positive note, episodes last a few minutes at most and resolve almost instantly on their own. While scary, the episodes are not dangerous as long as the individual finds a safe place in which to collapse. Type 2 narcolepsy is simply narcolepsy without cataplexy. People with this condition experience excessive daytime sleepiness, but usually don't have muscle weakness triggered by their emotions. They also have less severe symptoms and have normal levels of the brain hormone hypocretin which is deficient in people with type 1 narcolepsy. All individuals with narcolepsy experience excessive daytime sleepiness, or EDS. This is often the most obvious symptom. EDS is characterized by persistent sleepiness, regardless of how much sleep an individual gets at night. However, sleepiness in narcolepsy is more like a sleep attack, where an overwhelming sense of sleepiness comes on quickly. In between sleep attacks, Individuals have normal levels of alertness, especially while doing activities that keep their attention. Sleep paralysis is another common symptom most people experience. This temporary inability to move or speak while falling asleep or waking up usually lasts only a few seconds and is similar to REM-induced inhibitions of voluntary muscle activity. Sleep paralysis resembles cataplexy, except it only occurs at the edges of sleep. As with cataplexy, people remain fully conscious. Even when severe, cataplexy and sleep paralysis do not result in permanent dysfunction. After episodes end, people rapidly recover their full capacity to move and speak. 
vivid hallucinations and sometimes frightening images can accompany sleep paralysis and usually occur when people are falling asleep or waking up. Most often, the hallucinations are primarily visual, but any of the other senses can be involved. It's important to note that although people with narcolepsy are very sleepy during the day, they can also experience difficulty staying asleep at night. Sleep may be disrupted by insomnia, vivid dreaming, sleep apnea, acting out while dreaming, and periodic leg movements. Narcolepsy is a frustrating disorder. It can be difficult for people who don't have it to understand and difficult for doctors to accurately diagnose. Still, this shouldn't stop you from understanding it yourself or seeking professional treatment. When seeking a narcolepsy diagnosis, a clinical examination and detailed medical history are essential for accurate diagnosis and treatment of narcolepsy. Individuals may be asked by their doctor to keep a sleep journal, noting the times of sleep and symptoms over a one to two week period. Although none of the major symptoms are exclusive to narcolepsy, cataplexy is the most specific symptom and occurs in almost no other diseases. There are two main specialized tests that are required to establish a diagnosis of narcolepsy. A polysomnogram, or PSG, and a multiple sleep latency test, or MSLT. A PSG is an overnight recording of brain and muscle activity, breathing, and eye movements. A PSG can help reveal whether REM sleep occurs early in the sleep cycle and if an individual's symptoms result from another condition such as sleep apnea. The MSLT assesses daytime sleepiness by measuring how quickly a person falls asleep and whether they enter REM sleep. On the day after the PSG, an individual is asked to take five short naps, separated by two hours over the course of a day. If the individual falls asleep in less than eight minutes on average, this indicates excessive daytime sleepiness. However, individuals with narcolepsy also have REM sleep start abnormally quickly. If REM sleep happens within 15 minutes, at least two times out of the five naps, and the sleep study the night before, this is likely an abnormality caused by narcolepsy. Narcolepsy Treatments There is no cure for narcolepsy, but some of the symptoms can be treated with medicine and lifestyle changes. When cataplexy is present, narcolepsy is believed to be irreversible and lifelong. Excessive daytime sleepiness and cataplexy can be controlled in most individuals with medications. The first line of treatment is usually a central nervous system stimulant, such as modafinil. Modafinil is usually prescribed first because it's less addictive and has fewer side effects than other stimulants. For most people, these drugs are generally effective at reducing daytime drowsiness and improving alertness. Doctors may also consider prescribing amphetamines or antidepressants in cases where modafinil is not effective. Amphetamines must be monitored carefully due to their side effects, including nervousness, irritability, and disturbance in heart rhythm. Antidepressants produce fewer adverse effects than amphetamines, but troubling effects will still occur in some individuals, such as impotence and high blood pressure. Drug therapy should always accompany lifestyle changes, and the following strategies may be helpful. Take short, scheduled naps at times of the day when you feel sleepiest. Go to bed and wake up at the same time every day, even on weekends. Avoid alcohol and caffeine for several hours before bedtime. Avoid smoking, especially at night. Exercise for at least 20 minutes per day, four to five hours before bedtime. Avoid large meals right before bedtime. Eating very close to bed can make it harder to fall asleep. Remember to relax before bed. Activities such as a warm bath right before bedtime can help promote sleepiness. Make sure your sleep space is cool and comfortable. Did you find this video helpful? I hope so. Let me know about your experience with narcolepsy in the comments and things that may have helped you with symptoms. Hope to see you again.